Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha and mabuhai. Welcome to another edition of uh, Think Tech Hawaii here on Pinoy Power Hawaii. We come to your home live from uh, 12 noon on Tuesdays, and uh, it's a wonderful, special day today. Uh, we have a very special guest. He is well known in our community in the state of Hawaii for uh, doing such a remarkable job in uh, leading and also serving our uh, community as a uh, council member. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce to you Bran Brandon Elefante. Welcome to our show, Brandon. Thank you, Emmy. Pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to have you. And um, I want to thank you from the heart for uh, coming and uh, helping us with our empowerment. We have a five-fold mission. We aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and empower. So today, we would like to hear about Brandon Elefante. Thank you. Yes, uh, it really truly is an honor to serve on the Honolulu City Council. And before I became a council member, I actually started mm -hmm. off um, growing up in the district that I currently reside in now mm -hmm. and went to public schools, graduated from Aya High School and went away for school at St. Mary's College of California. Mm -hmm. And it was during my time actually at St. Mary's. It's in, located in the Bay Area. It's a small liberal arts school where I was able to connect and find more of my passion. So we are able to co-found a Hawaii club. I was a resident advisor. I got involved for a Catholic Institute for LaSalle mm -hmm. uh, Lasallian Social Action, which meant that we went out and reached out to different populations of our group in terms of getting people out to vote or people um, in marginalized communities um, and got to know the history of the Bay Area and around mm -hmm. that. And also working with different homeless shelters in Oakland and in San Francisco at St. Vincent de Paul and also Dorothy Day House in, in Berkeley. So we, I was able to kind of gather sort of a w wide perspective on life beyond Hawaii. And mm -hmm. I always knew that I wanted to come back home. And so I had the opportunity to come back home. I thought I actually would stay in the San Francisco Bay Area much longer than mm -hmm. just college itself. And I look at those years as formative years for me to develop my passion for where I am today. And so I came back home. I was a high school teacher at Damien Memorial School and then was also a coach for several years and got involved in higher education. And mm -hmm. I, was, I was, was figuring things out on my own uh, in my life. I knew that I was called to serve and share the gifts and talents that I have with the broader based community and not just in the classroom. While I do miss teaching, mm -hmm. I do see some of my former students uh, and also volunteered at, at my local church as well as a teacher. Uh, what I do now really brings everything in perspective in dealing with different types of issues, different concerns, challenges, as well as successes. So I'm very grateful for my experience over the years that led me to where I am today. And, and had it not been for those experiences of teaching and higher education mm -hmm. and working in the state legislature for a session and as a staff member to my predecessor, who is now State Senator Breen Harimoto, I think that really uh, empowered me in a way to mm -hmm. learn the, the position that I'm in and learn to embrace it and learn to uh, serve it honorably and to give back to the community that I grew up in and that's give, given me a lot so that in turn that I can give back to them. Wonderful. I could sit here and just uh, listen to all of the uh, empowerment that you've done so far. Uh, so, and you're only 21, right? <laughs> <laughs> So, Eleven years ago, I could that. <laughs> we are uh, talking about uh, being called to serve. So early on, you knew that you had those uh, leadership ability in you uh, to serve and to lead. Uh, how did that come about? Uh, it came about from really just the efforts of my family. Mm -hmm. you know, I grew up in uh, a family that you know, my mom was sing a single mother. I never met my dad growing up, and so. She often struggled at times to make mm -hmm. ends meet, and she knew that she wanted the best for me and to place me in the right environment or conditions to set me up for success and life after high school and whatnot. And so because of her and mm -hmm. my grandparents and her siblings, you know, they were able to really care for me and, and raise me as a family. Mm -hmm. uh, and being that I'm the only grandchild, you know, even more so my grandparents felt uh, a more... Um, a way to kind of help guide me along my way. And, you know, they've come from a long background of, of being in the community for many years. But prior to that, they immigrated from the Philippines. Yes. Like many of 
uh, the people that we see here that live in Hawaii from different parts mm -hmm. of uh, our world that have come to Hawaii and really it's a melting pot that we live in here today. I mean, yes. it's paradise and that's something we're mm -hmm. truly grateful for. And so they taught me those values of, you know, honesty, integrity, hard work, mm -hmm. um, being kind to others, uh, treating everyone with respect and dignity. So those things that I learned at an early mm -hmm. age and, and through those different values have taught me life lessons down the road and to hold true to those firm foundations. So I'm very grateful and I love them dearly till this day and will always do and they're a very important part of my life and I'm grateful for what they saw in me to help mm -hmm. prepare me for where I am today. So wonderful to hear about your uh, grounded uh, upbringing. Uh, with those uh, sound values mm -hmm. coming from uh, an uh, immigrant, mm -hmm. immigrant family. It's another um, success story of how uh, someone who's really determined to uh, make it in a foreign land or strange land mm -hmm. uh, can have a success story. And uh, listening to uh, your upbringing, uh, Brandon, you know, you never use the fact that uh, your mother was a single mm -hmm. mother uh, never use it as a crutch and say, well, you've, I feel sorry for myself. You know, I didn't have a father figure. In your case, um, it served like a strong force to mm -hmm. not have a fa father figure because it uh, looks like your grandfather and all the uncles and aunties kicked in to make up for that loss. That's correct. Uh -huh. Yeah, you know, they all pitched in to help wherever they could with their strengths to help raise me and also support me and my dreams and goals. Mm -hmm. And a look at you, a strong uh, role model uh, who, who's done very, very well at an early age. And uh, that goes to show that uh, education yes. uh, really uh, has its place. And in your case, uh, it really brought you, brought you into uh, uh, this area now mm -hmm. where you continue to serve. And um, with the endorsement of uh, the Honolulu Advertiser, if I may say. Yes, yes. Uh, tell us about that. So I'm very grateful for um, the Star Advertiser's endorsement for um, me again to serve on another four years. I'm very grateful for that. And not every issue is um, that we I may see eye to eye in that sense. What I think what I'm grateful for is that I've gained their trust and confidence mm -hmm. um, to be able to continue to do the work that I love and to serve the people of our city and county and the area that I grew up in, in the IA Pro City area. And I also represent Waipahu too. And each council mm -hmm. district has its sets of issues in different communities and, and we work through them. Uh, and so I'm very grateful to have that, I'm very honored to serve um, and look forward, you know, to new things and new goals um, that we want to set. There's many things that we continue to work on to mm -hmm. con continue to work hard and strive for. Uh, you know, what I want to do is, you know, leave a positive legacy behind mm -hmm. and know that we, what we got it in, you know, when I got into office is that we leave it behind in a much better condition for the next person in that sense. So I'm very grateful for, for, for that endorsement by, by, by the Star Advertiser. Mm -hmm. And so it's very good to, to hear that and, and see, see that positive news. Okay, well, wonderful, wonderful um, uh, story, and I know that all eyes are on you. Um, they are really following your uh, success story because a lot of the uh, young ones, especially the youth, mm -hmm. are really uh, following you and uh, tracking your progress. And uh, this coming uh, general election will uh, are certainly we. Uh, <laughs> We look forward yeah. uh, to that, and I know that there are a lot of people that are out to uh, give you support right. because they want to see you continue sure. on yeah. and uh, also move, move on to bigger things. Thank you. Yeah, and, it's, and I would say on that note, Emmy, is that it's important for young people to really connect and mm -hmm. get involved in their communities and be a part of something, whether it's a club, volunteer organization, mm -hmm. but more importantly, important for young people the young generation especially. I myself, you know, I'm a millennial, uh, kind of on the older side of, of the millennial category. But it's important for, for that population to get active, get connected, mm -hmm. and get involved by voting. And if they're not able to because of their age or whatever it may be, you know, to at least 
get active in a way of educating themselves so that they can share that knowledge and information with others. And so when I go and talk to different schools mm -hmm. or different groups, I like to plant seeds in a way of, while some of them may be young in terms of not ready to vote yet, I share my experience and what I do and impart that knowledge to them to really get them excited about how much of a difference that one person can make, can make you know, and yes. one vote can make um, mm -hmm. in any type of thing, or them speaking out for themselves, or them um, advocating for their dreams and goals, or advocating for their concerns. So those are very important, and I think a lot of that has to continue to resonate as we go forward, because truly, it's, it's going to be up to all of us to mm -hmm. work out, you know, the issues in the community and strive for success in that way. So listening to you uh, sounds like a farming, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I do in my spare time. Right, I, right. I like to listen to you when uh, you talk about planting seeds mm -hmm. and um, uh, making sure that uh, you start with a good seed. Right. And then uh, the things that you need to do necessary. And you got to continue to water it right. and take Cultivate. out all the weeds, yes. you know, uh -huh. unnecessary things that are around there. Yep. Right. Yep. Uh, but um, uh, those are really important mm -hmm. steps uh, to uh, seeing uh, constant uh, progress or at least see the fruit of your mm -hmm. uh, hard labor, mm -hmm. at least for me Thank you. Uh, as a farmer. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, I know that uh, you've, uh, you've done your rounds going to different uh, schools and also um, share or Share your story with uh, uh, these young children, especially, mm -hmm. the hope of our future. Mm -hmm. um, what is the uh, reaction that you get when the, you speak to the young ones and you talk to them about you know, fulfilling their dreams? It's, it's really encouraging to see uh, their reaction and that there are people around them, not just myself, mm -hmm. but their teachers, their support staff, their counselors that really care about them. And as a former teacher, you know, when you show a student that you care mm -hmm. about them, no matter what state of condition that they're in, if you show them that you care and give that extra effort and believe in them, mm -hmm. it's, it's always a mindset in that sense. So they get encouraged by that as I talk to whether it be student leaders or students or those, you know, coming up and want to do more and just not sure how to, how to do that. Mm -hmm. So my message is of inspiration and hope to them so that I can inspire them so that they can go on and contribute to our society in different ways by sharing their gifts and talents and being a good steward um, going out there. So I think when I share with them and get feedback as mm -hmm. well, they are really um, shocked because they get all this information and things that they're not aware of of what the role of what cities do mm -hmm. or what my role is as a city council member and how I can impact communities in positive ways and how do I address you know, different things and how they can make a difference and how they can voice their things at their school level or clubs or even in their own home and just yes. having conversations with their parents or family members or friends, even so. And so I've seen that firsthand you know, in working with different organizations mm -hmm. and clubs at schools you know, and being able to connect with them and advocate for their, their issues. Wonderful. Um, it is important to continue nurturing and uh, guiding them along mm -hmm. the way so uh, they will blossom into their full potential. We're going to continue our conversation with Brandon Alofante after uh, these short messages, and we will talk about uh, some of the bills or uh, laws that he helped to uh, pilot. Uh, we will be back here on Pinoy Power Hawaii here on Think Tech Hawaii. Hello, my name is Stephanie Mock, and I'm one of three hosts of Think Tech Hawaii's Hawaii Food and Farmers series. Our other hosts are Matt Johnson and Pamai Weigert, and we talk to those who are in the fields and behind the scenes of our local food system. We talk to farmers, chefs, restaurateurs, and more to learn more about what goes into sustainable agriculture here in Hawaii. We are on at Thursdays at 4 p.m., and we hope we'll see you next time. ニホンゴでお届けする。こんにちは、ハワイの日本語コミュニティに便利なお助け情報、ニュースなどをゲストをお招きしてお届けする番組です。こんにちは、ハワイ。各週月曜日の2時からお届けしています。日本語コミュニ
ポストの国瀬ゆかりでした。アロハ Welcome back to Pinoy Power Hawaii here on Think Tech Hawaii. I am your host, Emmy Ortega Anderson, and it is a pleasure to have with us a young, prominent、uh, leader who's making a wave, making a big difference in、uh, leading and, of course,、uh, leaving a legacy for others to follow. So,、uh, Brandon. Uh, thank you for that wonderful, wonderful story that you have shared、um, from your immigration story、mm -hmm. and how、uh, your family has really helped to build a solid foundation、uh, to help you with your leadership. And of course,、uh, look at you, a fine young man. And I always mention in our conversation that if I had to pick a, a son in law, you would be the one. Thank、yeah. you. So, Thank you, Amy.、Uh, <laughs> he's the one, he's the bomb. <laughs> We are going to、uh, look deeper into、uh, some of the wonderful、uh, accomplishments that、uh, Brandon h a v e done in、uh, his four, first four years、uh, serving as a council member. So, please walk us through with some of、uh, what you have.、Uh, Piloted or? Yeah, no, th th thank you for that question. I mean, you know, we've done a lot in the last、mm -hmm. four years. And prior to that,、uh, eight years ago, when I first started at the council as a staffer to former council member, Breen Harimoto, who's、mm -hmm. now the area state senator,、uh, we worked on、uh, a lot of things leading up to、uh, where we, what we've accomplished today.、Mm -hmm. well, one of the first things when I got into office back in November of 2014,、mm -hmm. seems like it was a long time ago, but I feel like that was only like, A few months ago. Yes, I、sense. remember starting out with you, and I was one of your biggest cheerleaders. Yes, yes, yes. thank you for that. Okay. And, and one of the first things that I was able to accomplish and, and collaborate and work with the administration and also a city in the Philippines was establish a sister city relationship with、mm -hmm. Kandon City, Philippines. And we're able to partner with them. And you know, at the city, we have different sister city relationships.、Mm -hmm. And that's where some of our first sakatas came from. I have a、yes. grand uncle. Who came from Kandon, came here you know, as an engineer,、uh, married you know, in, into our,、um, uh, married my grand aunt. And、mm -hmm. so you know, there's a lot of history behind people from Kandon or the Philippines coming here. And so we're able to establish that connection and partnership、yes. with Kandon. And so that was really、um, awesome to see that and connect with that and accomplish that.、Mm -hmm. I've also worked on numerous things, w i t h includes our. Refurbishing of our city parks, which includes playground equipment, our restrooms.、Uh, we're able to get a key lease agreement signed with the United States Navy for the Pearl Harbor Historic Trail, which really is a gem. And if those that are watching haven't、yes. been there, I would encourage you to stop by and take a look. It starts where kind of Rainbow Bay Marina is、mm -hmm. by McGrew Point and goes actually all the way as far as Nanakuli as well. But those sections are not really paved or、uh, nicely、um, paved or constructed. But、mm -hmm. For the majority of the section in the IEA Pro City area, we're able to sign a long term lease agreement with the Navy to clean up the efforts there, restore it. And actually, this coming Saturday, there's a,、uh, there's a cleanup effort along、mm -hmm. the trail. So, those that want to volunteer can assist in, in that effort as well. But, so, we're able to accomplish that and put funding for that.、Uh, aside from that, we're able to get key road repaving in the district,、uh, repaving our roads that were in dire need of repair. Also, our sewer infrastructure, we're with a federal consent decree, so we're able、mm -hmm. to get a lot of those major repairs that were mandatory to comply with, with the federal、uh, EPA consent decree that we have to do and upgrade our sewer system. And so there have been other things in focusing on seniors as well and looking at ways that we can look at visitability, which makes accessing a home you know, with the restrictions, you know, maybe、mm -hmm. a zero entrance or How things are more friendlier for seniors as they age in place. So, I was able to be a part of the Age Friendly Cities Committee and participate and offer my comments. And as a person seeing what it's like and connecting with my grandparents and seeing what they go through, you know, granted that they are healthy and active in their、mm -hmm. 80s,、um, sometimes life can bring challenges too for those that may not be mobile in that sense. So, we have to accommodate for that. So, I feel very grateful for those district wide accomplishments that we、right. were able to get. And from a policy perspective, we're able to look at making areas safer. So I've been supportive and we're able to get one of the first city and counties、uh, to have a ban on banning your cell phone in a crosswalk. Yes,、uh -huh. I, I'm that guy who、okay. uh, introduced <laughs> that and advocated for that. And, you know, Before we get into、uh, that uh, big uh, technology. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, issue. Uh, I want to commend you for um, doing your part in saving our Aina, taking mm. care of our land, uh, from uh, uh, taking care of the trail for those nature yes. lovers that would like to uh, preserve uh, that trail. Mm -hmm. That's very, very important. And to make sure that uh, you have signed or um, made that agreement yeah. to uh, keep it nice and clean for f uh, future generations. So that's one way of uh, taking care of uh, the children, especially from the parks uh, to the equipment, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then uh, taking care of our kupunas. Uh, sometimes uh, they think that they, they are forgotten, right, but right. Uh, you have ar already uh, touched on that mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, appreciate uh, the wonderful job that they've done by uh, still caring for our kupunas. Thank you for that. And you know, I've also gone out to different uh, um, senior groups in the community mm -hmm. and shared with them. The city does have a Office of Elderly Affairs Division that mm -hmm. people can call every year. They come out with a handbook on key phone numbers or information to help those um, that are aging in place. You know, with information and resources that are out there. So, yeah, thank you for those kind, kind words on those things that we've worked on, and some have. Taken a while, some we were able to do, you mm -hmm. know, in a few months. But it's really grateful to to see all the hard work that not just myself, but mm -hmm. really a collaborative effort with the community. Yeah. So I can them. understand, Brandon, why your appeal is so massive and so great because you work with the young and also with the elderly, mm -hmm. and they uh, you just have developed that following, and it's it's the young boy appeal or the charm. <laughs> But uh, anyway, let's uh, move on to another important, and this is, has to do with technology. Mm -hmm. And we are all affected by uh, this, you know, whether it's uh, safety mm -hmm. or uh, trying to regulate the use of it so we don't overdose right. on it. Right. Uh, tell us about what you've done. So as I, I was, uh, I was uh, mentioning mm -hmm. about banning cell phones or electronic devices in a crosswalk, so currently in our city and county, you're not able to view in the direction of your cell phone or some sort of electronic device. You can still call and, and cross the, the street, but it's when you view it in, it's a form of distraction. Distraction, so yeah. We're able to pass a law here, uh, one of the first in the nation. Other cities have called us and asked us, you know, how did you guys do mm -hmm. it? And even across the world, in terms of, you know, how we're able to accomplish it as technology has advanced. So. I'm very grateful for that, and it's something that should be common sense as we focus on crossing the streets. We're all pedestrians at one point in our life, yes. um, and getting to places that we need to go to. Uh, really, it's um, it's a safety measure, and so I worked with the different youth for safety mm -hmm. clubs at Waipahu High School mm -hmm. and the Peer Education Club at Aia High School, key high school areas in the district, and so they are able to share this concern because they saw their peers being distracted when we didn't have a law. So they were able to advocate and uh, voice their concern mm -hmm. and stand with us as being champions for this legislation. That is so wonderful yeah. to hear. It's about safety. And do you think that has a direct correlation of how many uh, pedestrian uh, fatalities we've, we've had? Right. I know our number is a very it's high number this year, there. I think over over 90 so far, mm -hmm. and it's really sad to do see that. And I think there has some sort of correlation to it, not able to pinpoint the exact fact. I mean, there could be a number of factors involved for fatalities that we see in our state of Hawaii or in our city and county, whether it may be, you know, due to different circumstances of the issue, speeding or maybe not visible uh, mm -hmm. in certain respects. So there's a number of factors, you know, involved that go with you know, fatalities. We certainly don't want to see that occur. You know, we definitely yes. want to always strive for zero fatalities every year in our city and county. And so city and county has doubled its efforts to mm -hmm. address issues of reducing that amount and getting it to zero and making streets safer with complete streets with Vision Zero, which we just had a hearing on, um, that areas across the globe are looking at on ways to um, make it more safe in our streets. Yeah, thank you for bringing mm -hmm. awareness and uh, safety by just uh, letting people know that uh, these are the things that really affect our, our safety. Right. 
Okay, with a few minutes remaining, uh, Brandon, I know that uh, you talk about legacy and mm -hmm. how you would like to make a difference. Uh, please reiterate again. Mm -hmm. Um, why should the people vote for you this coming general el election? Thank you, I mean, and thank you again for having me on your show here today. And to all the viewers out there for watching, thank you for being a part of today's show. The reason why I want to commit to another four years, and I'm committed to that, and mm -hmm. continue on, is to continue on that legacy. I feel that my experience from being a former teacher to being a lifelong community member, to a broad base of experience with serving on um, volunteer boards, uh, being able to connect with nonprofits, government, mm -hmm. federal agencies. You know, in public office, it's, it's about relationships and connecting with people to get things done in that sense. And communication, of course. Yes. And responding to constituents and, and their issues and concerns. And so I really feel that I'm capable and willing, mm -hmm. again, to serve for another term because I feel that my accomplishments and my decisions on policy issues speaks for itself mm -hmm. and where I stand uh, as a member of this community. And it's, this is a place that I love and call home. And I want to make sure that we have the right tools in place and policies in place so that when I do leave office, mm -hmm. that we left it in a, in, a, in a good place and that this is something that uh, my kids and their kids can be all proud of, you know, and going back and looking uh, back, you know, many years from now. So I feel that my experience and my ability to lead in that effort and being a, a lifelong resident of the mm -hmm. area and my background uh, definitely makes me uh, really capable of, of wanting to serve again and for the community's support. And, and I feel very honored to serve uh, in this role because I really feel that I do make a difference. Every day is unique. Okay. So with the one minute remaining, yeah. uh, when they think of Brandon Elefante, what are those uh, key words that uh, they should be thinking of or what sticks on their mind? Well, that, you know, that I'm, I'm someone that's from here, that I've, I've been a lifelong resident of the area, attended public schools, mm -hmm. and that I'm committed to working hard. And I'm committed to you know doing the right thing and standing up, even though w while it may not be popular, I'm willing to um, take up. up you know the hard issues and and make my voice heard and provide my comments and remarks. And that I look not just only for the district I represent, but really for our entire community, which is our whole city and county of Honolulu and our entire island. And that. I'm committed, that I'm approachable, that anyone can approach me and have a conversation with me, and that I'm here to serve. There you go. Um, that completes our portion with Brandon Elefante. Please remember his name, Elefante the Giant, uh, on this uh, coming uh, general election. Uh, you've uh, heard what he stands for, and he is certainly called to serve, and yeah. that you're doing such a remarkable job. Thank you, Emmy. Thank you again, Brandon Lafonte. Uh, that brings our uh, another edition of uh, Pinar Power Hawaii here on Think Tech Hawaii to a close. And again, we aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower. We say maraming salamat po, mabuhay, mabuhay, and much mahalo.